Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to the fourth chapter of our textbook. This chapter talks about human memory. It deals with the brain and human memory. Okay, so the objective of this chapter is to identify the meaning and types of human memory. Okay, and let's start or let's move to the vocabulary log of this chapter. The vocabulary log of this chapter include words like psychology, remember, research, program, emphasis, memorable, recommend, puzzle, participate, optimistic, and interested. You are highly or you are strongly advised to study these words before you listen to the audio track so you can be familiar with the content of the first audio track. So let's move to the definition of a human memory. A human memory is the ability to encode, store, retain, and subsequently recall information and past experiences in the human brain. But we as a human differ in the ability of encoding, storing, and retaining. Some of, some of us have uh, very strong memories, others, unlike the others who have very poor memories or very weak memories. So the types of memories include two types. The first one is short-term memory, and the second is, is long-term memory. Short-term memory is defined as the phase or type of memory responsible for the temporary storage of information. So in this kind or this type of memory, we store the information for a short period of time. Long-term memory is the phase or type of memory which is responsible for the storage of information for a, an extended period of time. So in this type of memory, we store the information for long period of time. Okay, is it clear so far? So let's move to the first audio track, as we said, which deals with memories. You are required to listen to the, TV, to the TV news report about the boot camp for the brain and then number the topics in the order they are discussed. So here we have one, two, three, four, six topics. Your role is to listen to the TV news report and then number the topics in the order they are discussed. Many people worry about memory loss. It's normal to lose memory as you get older. In fact, memory loss can begin when someone is in their 20s. But how much of your memory do you have to lose? And how quickly does it have to happen? Research on the brain and memory is a huge area these days. Doctors are looking for ways to help people improve their memory and possibly prevent loss. Today on the show, we're looking at one program to help memory called the Boot Camp for the Brain. What's the boot camp for the brain? It's a two-week program developed by a psychiatrist named Gary Small. His program combines four elements, a special diet, daily physical activity, stress-relieving exercises, and, of course, memory exercises. The memory exercises take about 15 minutes a day. Dr. Small claims that this combination can improve your brain's function. Michelle Rubin is one of Dr. Small's success stories. Rubin is a 46-year-old mother of three teenagers. At the start of the program, her memory tested as average for her age. When she took memory tests after the program, her memory was equal to a 20-year-old person. Rubin says that a few years ago, she started to feel that she was forgetting things and that her memory was not as good as it used to be. She says that the program was life-changing. Since the program, in addition to exercising more and improving her diet, she has started using memory strategies, reading nonfiction, and doing crossword puzzles. She also helps her children with their math homework as a way to work her brain. Dr. Small says that he has evidence that the two-week boot camp program does, in fact, change the brain. He did a study with 17 volunteers. All of the volunteers had mild memory complaints. Dr. Small randomly chose eight people to participate in the boot camp for the brain 
and the remaining nine people did nothing different. They did brain scans on all 17 people before and after the program. Dr. Small says that the eight people who participated developed significantly more efficient brain cell activity in a front part of the brain that controls everyday memory tasks. The people who participated also said that they felt less forgetful after the program. Dr. Small emphasizes that this study was very small and that a larger study is needed, but he still feels that the results are important. Other scientists say they are cautiously optimistic about Small's approach. They feel more research is needed, but say it's possible that the boot camp for the brain could delay serious memory problems. Michelle Rubin and many others who have participated in the program believe that it has definitely helped their memory. So, if you're worried about your memory, the boot camp for the brain might be worth looking into. Tomorrow, we're going to look at some other programs and ideas for improving memory. Okay, number one, what do you think? What do you think? Number one, according to the audio track, uh, it starts by giving examples about or examples of memory problems. This is number one. Number two. Number two talks about, then a second topic was about what happens at boot camp for the brain, for the brain. Number three. The third topic was about providing a sample or an example of a research study about memories. So that was the third topic. Number four. Number four was about what other scientists think. How about number five? How about using memory to prepare for college exams or childhood memories? Did they mention this? So out of six topics, they only discussed and mentioned four topics. So these are the topics uh, uh, which, which were discussed in this audio track. So these topics were not discussed. Thank you very much.